Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this evening update. I hope you're all having a really wonderful day thus far. And so why could that developing storm be something historic? I'll be explaining why in this update as well as giving you the latest in terms of what is happening across the Caribbean with a bit of focus being on Jamaica. And so before I go into details, please do subscribe if you haven't yet done so and tap the bell so that you never miss an important update. Okay, so we are over in the Western Atlantic and so we can see that there is still that activity over into parts of the Southwestern Caribbean and over in sections of the Eastern Pacific. And so uh, sections of Honduras going to Nicaragua, uh, Costa Rica, Panama are likely experiencing some overcast conditions, maybe with some showers and thunderstorms in some areas. And this activity has been persistent and will remain persistent for some time. And so you might notice that a uh, stream of activity that is extended into parts of Jamaica go into Hispaniola and uh, even making its way to Puerto Rico as well. Now this is inducing a bit of shower and thunderstorm activity over in sections of the Dominican Republic and uh, over in the eastern side of Jamaica it's likely pretty overcast so on infrared satellite there we can see the movement of that uh, stream of activity but as we look at the visible satellite aside from that system uh, which has resulted in some overcast conditions over in uh, sections of southern and eastern parishes uh, it's really just some passing clouds over into sections of the the central and western parts of the islands coming out of the east and uh, it is pretty windy across some areas as well and so not much rainfall activity is likely as we're going to be heading throughout the rest of today. Now guys uh, let's go on and talk about other parts of the Caribbean. So look into northern and central American areas as well as parts of Cuba, the Cayman Islands, uh, sections of the Bahamas going over into the eastern islands we can see that uh, there isn't too much happening maybe some overcast conditions for some areas going down into northern and south America America, similar story but uh, there are some spots of deep convection in parts of Venezuela going to uh, Guyana as well as Suriname and French Guiana. so some areas are likely experiencing some uh, thunderstorms and even some heavy rainfall uh, as we are progressing throughout the afternoon and so now we are going to the coast of Africa where we have our area uh, to watch here or a disturbance and so this tropical wave here is producing a lot of shower and thunderstorm activity and it is expected to gradually get itself together as we head into this weekend and into the and into the early part of the new week and NHC states that hey this could become a depression by the early part of the new week uh, and that is something that we have the ensemble members of the GFS and Euro models expecting uh, so we'll be taking a look at those later down in this video so let's go on to the latest uh, seven day Tropical, tropical weather outlook. This is as of 2 p.m. EDT and there we have that system located to the southeast of the Cabo Verde the Islands and it is given a 60% chance of development. So that development chance is gradually increasing. So I'm expecting that by tonight or by tomorrow, uh, this is going to be high. So uh, when we see that red shade, when this becomes red, it means that the formation chance is high. Uh, doesn't 100% guarantee that this will in fact develop, but it seems pretty likely at this point in time. So it will go on that westward track and start to move a bit to the west-northwest, heading closer to the Caribbean as we head further into the new week. And why could this become historic? Why did I say that? Well, I want to bring you guys a bit down in history. So uh, let's go back to 2021 with Hurricane Elsa that developed. So Elsa was a Category 1 hurricane and it actually uh, developed on its way to the Caribbean, not too far off from the region. And then heading to 2017, there was Brett that developed not too far off from Trinidad. That is the point when it became a tropical storm. Now, aside from those two systems, there was none that developed so far east in longitude, uh, so close to the coast of Africa in the month of June. So that is why it could be historic. It could be the first in uh, maybe over 50 years or more. Maybe it's the first since records began. I'm not entirely sure, but I know for a fact that for the last 50 years, there was no storm that developed in June so close to the coast of Africa. This is something we see head into July, especially late July head into the month of August so this could be something very historic and why is this you may ask well there are above average sea surface temperatures in the region and this June is the warmest on record and uh, we're seeing this anomalous warmth across the tropical Atlantic and are uh, focusing on the main development region which is from those eastern islands of the Caribbean heading eastward to the coast of Africa that is where we have the main development region which is where uh, most developed 
development takes place during the hurricane season. So uh, that's where we find most storms. And as a matter of fact, for a lot of seasons, June is pretty quiet. Now, this isn't to say that, hey, we're going to have a crazy hurricane season because 2005 only produced two named storms in June, but it was still a very active season, a record-breaking season. Similar story for 2020, but it is as we head further into the heart of the hurricane season that we see more activity. But uh, even with those tracks, notice where we have those systems form in the vicinity of the Caribbean, going to the Gulf of Mexico, and also off the eastern coast of the U.S. And that is the typical origin spot for cyclones during June because things are typically very hostile over in the main development region. But that is not the case for this year as uh, there are those anomalously warm temperatures which are uh, going to be fueling activity. And the kind of warming that we're seeing is something uh, that we should look for heading to August, going to September, which is the peak. So if we're seeing that kind of warming from now, what does this say about the peak? It could be uh, a very active season, a lot more active than any El Nino season before now. And I think it could even surpass last year in terms of the number of storms we see because last year was La Nina season, but the abundant and dry air from the Saharan dust and increased wind shear prevented a lot of activity. And uh, even August was very quiet. Nothing developed in the month of August. So uh, there are many variables to consider with uh, regards to what could happen for the rest of the hurricane season. And this is what typically happens during an El Nino season. We have that increase in wind shear, which really helps to suppress the development of activity. But it doesn't look as though that is going to be the case. The El Nino will have to work a bit harder this year uh, if we're going to be uh, seeing anything very similar to a quiet season where we see below average activity. And so just a reminder of the names for this hurricane season, this is the list, of course, Arlene is off of it uh, because it developed and uh, we have the next name being Brett. Now you might be like, hold up, didn't you show me the track of Brett earlier? Well, yes, that was Brett of 2005. The lists are reused every six years unless a storm name was retired and replaced. So for this list, for example, this is the same list from 2017 with some names being replaced. Uh, Harvey, Irma, Maria, and Nate are off the list because those were destructive hurricanes that cause lots of damage and instead they are replaced with uh, names of the same letter and gender Harvey with Harold, Irma with Idalia, Maria with Margot and Nate with Nigel. So you can let me know in the comments which name you think is going to be uh, used for the strongest storm of this hurricane season and that is pretty much it for this update video and so I hope that you found it to be quite informative but if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments I will try to respond as best and as soon as I can and of course, remember to always be weatherwise.